it's lovely to meet you. Um, yes, it is. Anyway, we, um, we, we have deliberately not talked about what we're going to talk about because it's, there's nothing worse than people talking before and then looking completely like that when people are, as if the audience was rather secondary. So we, we, we're going to surprise each other, I hope. Um, this is a great installation and obviously a very telling and apt context somehow being built. It's very useful also to have this kind of rather comforting rolling series of images because it means I don't have to spell out every place that this fantastic campaign or work has been placed in. So it's in a way a subliminal sort of comfort to have this going on in the background. But on the other hand, I think what we didn't want to do was have a real obsession with individual works and a very obvious narrative, narrative about the work. I have piles of paper here because I'm so impressed by the work and the history of the work. And, I, and so I've actually spent a lot more time than usual even colour coding certain elements like this so that I don't get too mixed up. Um, obviously, we, we're starting off talking about this particular work, Exile is a Hard Job, and, um, and you're having the background to it there. And it's, it's something that has a particular, this kind of work that is like a campaign, that has no obvious physical presence, can disappear, and in the case of Valencia actually was taken down overnight, I believe. So the idea of transience, and this work applies and deals very much with the immigrant communities. Uh, this piece is often put, chosen by the particular institution that's housing it, but the work is therefore placed in a certain area. And I'm very interested in the fact that the artist has some involvement, but in a way some of the involvement is a matter of involving the art world or art institutions in a slightly different area altogether. So it's a sort of politically secondary role here. Um, can you talk a bit about, I, I really want to start off with a sort of institutional, the idea of yes. how you work on this. But first of all, uh, there, there must be an institution to ask for it, mm. but it's, it's a work that lives in the streets illegally put on the walls and usually destroyed or sometimes reacted to. Uh, but first of all, I must say, this sentence is not mine. Hmm. Uh, the greatest Turkish poet of all times, Nazım Hikmet, who himself was an exiled person, he was 13 years in, in, in prison and he ran away and he was, a, he was an exiled person. Uh, he wrote that exile is a hard job. Now, in this word, in this sentence, the word job is very important because, of course, I, I did this work. I started doing this work, like you see the photographs, the drawings, and the, the, the mixture of drawings and photographs by computer. I started doing these photographs and these drawings in 1974. And then I took these out, these drawings and the unique pieces, the original pieces are all in museums. But I, I had the idea in 2011 to do a uh, work in progress kind of work all over the world, in different cities, in different languages, the same sentence. So it started in 2012 in Spain. Mm. Uh, we put the, um, it was a gallery, uh, we had the original pieces in the gallery, we put the wall on the walls at night, the, uh, the posterings, we, we dropped the sentence in Spanish, and when we came back a few hours later, they were all torn, because the uh, district was getting to be a chic district, and they said we don't want any immigrants. Uh, sentences or immigrant faces on our streets. So that was very interesting too, the after. And so the idea went on from there, and now I'm on the 13th city. Uh, now why is the word job important? Because uh, immigration, migration, and displacement uh, the 
populations have changed. Today it's a different population than 40, 50 years ago. Uh, when I was working, these were uh, economic immigrant workers. They, they, Europe asked them to come over because they didn't want to do the job themselves. And uh, now we have another type of population, populations coming over because of war, because of uh, uh, climate changes. The population have changed, but you will see, because there are videos of these people, when you hear the videos, you see that the problems have not changed at all. That means that the countries who ask them to come over, or they come by themselves, they, have, they do not know it at all. They don't speak the language, they have no housing, the problems are the same. So when we think that people have come by boats, they are at Calais, they want to come to England, that we, we have a sort of the uh, of being afraid of the other. Yeah. But the other looks at us as the, also another other. So at that time, we look at them, uh, I mean, the saying that, uh, why are they here? They, have, they, have, they don't speak the language, they have no crafts. Uh, but it being just there is a job in itself. Can I That's the poet's word, is very important. It's very good, but can I interrupt a bit to bring you back to an early manifestation, sort of in a way reinforcing what you said about people coming as immigrant workers being invited to come and work. So that, but there are people who also weren't invited. So exile is a hard job. One manifestation in 1983 was sort of illegal Turkish immigrants working in the confetti industry. And confection, this was a confection. Confection, not confetti, sorry, confection. confection. Uh, and this was a very different kind of work because can you describe that work? I think it was two channel video. I mean, I'm just trying to open up so we can actually understand the range yeah. of your but work it, and the form of it. A video installation, a video yeah. sculpture we called the um, yeah. wall pieces. Yes. 83, it was shown, it was a solo show in the Museum of Modern Art of Paris. And uh, I worked for about a month in a 10th arrondissement district with these clandestine workers, mm. mostly Turkish Kurdish origin, uh, who worked in a very uh, terrible conditions with. Um, acrylic uh, with the um, uh, uh, cloth, which were uh, there was no aeration. So just yes, and they it. mostly had they had yeah. cancer later on, and it was uh, very hard conditions. And the whole family worked. It was very very strange. I mean, they had a small room. The father worked, the mother worked, and the children didn't go to school. They worked too. Uh, the terrible thing is that the women were double, uh, doubly punished because they, mm. the men went out to the cafes and they talked with each other, but women did not go out, they didn't speak, they could only go out shopping for food with their children who spoke in French because they went to the mm. first school, they did all the same, but the women like you see in that, that lady, it's, it's really it's in a, in a paranoid situation. She talks to the walls. That's why the wallpaper is important. She never goes out. And when she is inside, the husband brings the work. She sews, she sews, she sews, and the children also. So it's a sort of a prison, yes. uh, which is I mean, in, you, impossible. You manifest, or ex you, 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 you don't necessarily deal representation in a very obvious way. And I'm very impressed by your work particularly because in a way it is, it is, it avoids any notion of, of direct illustration. The idea we have now, and people put, have very simplistic ideas about political work, and in a way it's about it being about this and looking like this. And there's a fantastic gap in your work always. But also something, a work from 87, and then also 2014 and 2019, called Gitan or Gitan is Gitan, the, 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 the woman But well, you don't say gypsy anymore, you say yeah. wrong. The woman says politically correct. The woman says speak. the owner arrives, 
He takes us to his farm. We live in caves like animals and work for him for little money. So in a way, then there are drawings and a relationship between a figure and drawing. And then there are even, for you, which strikes me as kind of slightly different, a sort of more like animal type drawings. Can you talk about that? The drawings? Yeah. Yes. Uh, but those drawings are from the, uh, uh, I call it the gypsy, gypsy, but I mean, it's not politically correct, it seems it changes all the time, by the way. Uh, uh, but it is, uh, those are, I studied the gypsy uh, uh, history, that they come from India, as you know, they were all over the world, they are in England, in France, North of Africa, uh, in Spain, and everywhere, and uh, they have taken supposedly the religions of the countries they were settled in. Like uh, the, the woman I worked with was in Istanbul; she was a Muslim. But they have their own religion. They have their own ri ri uh, rituals. They have their own history. Very interesting. Lilith, Lilith is their, one of their goddesses. They have their own medicine. I studied all that, and those drawings are referred to those because that signals that they work on. Animals are very important. Yes, it's very. You know, they have a queen. Yeah. In France, they have it's a queen. very. It's very different, and, and nobody knows about them, that. They no. only know like that. People think that Rome's steel, no. But it's in their religion, in their tradition. If they don't steal at least this, they will go not to heaven, but to hell. But it's anyway, a small thing, the but it's, it's just, you have to explain those things. And you know, they, the, the reason I brought that up is because I'm just trying to represent, because we're here with this work, the kind of immense range of approach you have that's somehow very specific at times, but also fantastically range. You started off, sorry, but we have to talk about this because it's terribly important, and I have a massive load on that. As a, don't worry, it's just, it's just for me. Uh, as a painter, and then your relationship to painting has come and gone over a long time. Now, obviously, I'm not an old-fashioned person, so I'm not saying that's particularly fascinating, but it also is in the way you weave, for instance, the drawing over the gypsy work. Yes. And your relation, you started off making painting at the very beginning, mm. and then much later, you are sort of dealing with um, a new technology, but the relationship to abstract imagery. Yes. And well, tell anyway, me about that. Uh, all the techniques I used, I've never been to school for that. Mm. Never. I learned it by myself. Well, it's From impressive. drawing, to painting, to photography, to video, and new technologies. I learned it by myself. I haven't been to schools for that. I didn't go to art school. What we call that self-made uh, artist, yes. Is that, that's is that, that the right term? That's, yes. that's very yeah. true. And so, I, think, I think you've, but in a way maybe, because you didn't have that relationship to painting in art school, you therefore could embrace new technology more quickly, do you think? No, but I mean, when I started drawing, I was five years old. Uh, my grandmother, Circassian grandmother, told me how to draw. But uh, when I, when I, was at the age of uh, going into the art world, trying to find something about art. There was nothing in Istanbul. No galleries, no museums, no books. I exiled myself from that. That's why I came to Paris to settle down. There was nothing. So I couldn't, I couldn't follow, I didn't know. I knew there was something going on. But I didn't even have a book. Sometimes my father would get some Skira books, you know, Skira yeah. editions. Yes. On, with the, with on the, the, uh, uh, Monet, Cezanne, or Clay, Paul Clay, maybe. Uh, maybe Paul Clay, yes. But th that was all. I mean, I tried to. But then I started uh, being with the young artists who had been in Paris, Turkish artists, who started to talk to me about Russian constructivism. Yes. 
And that really impressed me a lot. And, the the, 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 uh, and there's an amazing series of works which are sort of based very vaguely on Manjevich. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But also this relationship between incredibly harsh, harsh outline and amazing impasto on the surface. <coughs> a sort of contrast. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's, all this is absolutely instinctive, you see. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I was a teacher at the Sorbonne, uh, art school, art, art section of the Sorbonne, teaching video art, video installation yeah. for 13 years. I was a visiting teacher, okay? And I said to my students every year, look, you have all these wonderful uh, shows, Bill Viola, Nam Jung Paik, in this museum, this museum, go and see visit them, go and see them. Did they not? Uh, no, no, I, I, they, no, they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I would tell them the next time, look, I come from a country that was nothing. No. I was so hungry and I yeah. didn't eat that, that kind of uh, food. Yeah. So why not? And but one of them said, because maybe you had nothing that you did uh, interesting work. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I think that was I an think easy that's a bit answer. Romantic. Yeah, it's they a bit just romantic. They didn't want to bother to go yes, to the gallery. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, so Naughty very strange. strange. There was one part of the world which was also all Middle East. Okay. Now it's very, very interesting what's going on with the Middle East artists. Yeah, fascinating. But at that time there was nothing. So the Middle East was just out. Yeah. Who would think in the 70s, 80s, to show an Algerian artist? I mean, they have history. France and Algeria have history. Mm. Common history, colonialist history. Who would show? Nobody would show it's a Turkish artist. It has changed now. But I mean, uh, so this geography also uh, it's also a sort of exile. There are not. There isn't only one exile. There are many exiles. Mm. You even have exile in your own body with yourself. So this is also a, a sort of exile. Now, I mean, look at this gallery. Fantastic. Uh, uh, look at the uh, Sharjah Biennial. Fantastic. fantastic. I mean, the most exceedingly ferocious and strong artists for me today are the Middle East artists. Like, certainly much better than the French. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and the French art scene, I mean. The Turkish art scene, uh, the Middle East art scene is fascinating. I, I, I made an observation which you probably... But, but we come from very far away, you know. Yeah. From... I am the li a living example of it. <laughs> you are. But I, I'm going to make an observation which you probably might not like, which is that, I mean, sometimes your work is very specific. It's specific because of where it's placed, and that's usually in a relationship to the institution that's agreed to place it. So, for instance, you know, with... Uh, you know, Valencia, Metz, Mumbai, Vienna, Istanbul, Brussels, Cologne, New York. And then there's something that happened, I felt, at some point in the early 80s, and I wanted to kind of characterize that time because it's important to me, all times important to me if I can remember it, but uh, the early 80s was a relationship to politics and that your, I felt that your, some of your work then was slightly more general and I'll try and find examples before you get cross about yeah. this, because I think probably, uh, where we are? Da, 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 da. Yes, that's right. Um, uh, le regard de, oh, the, the, the look of the other, or the... The, le regard de de oui, oui, not, uh, oh, that's 1992. No, no, it's oh, not oh, that. That's, that, that's, that's a, Let me get another That's exactly 89. the topic. What about the Marquis de Sade? Homage oh, yes. Let me talk, about, you talk that? about that. I mean, because that. I have certain personal, effective topics that I treated by myself. Because I, I just, uh, yeah, yes, but at times, you know, I felt, but I knew what it was. It was the 200th uh, celebration of the French Revolution. It has some political sense to it, don't worry. <laughs> 
Uh, France was uh, celebrating the 200th celebration of the French Revolution. That was 80. And uh, a curator and a responsible art, uh, cultural responsible of the city council of Le Havre yeah. uh, decided to make a, a show around Marquis de Sade. Because Marquis de Sade was a revolutionary during the French Revolution. Many people don't know that. He wrote very, very extremely uh, precise articles and uh, pamphlets throughout the revolution. And uh, so we, they wanted us to put this part of it. So we made, in a, in a cryptus and in, in, in the church, but we were about 10 artists, a work on Marquis de Sade. So I took one of his books, which is the most uh, political one. Uh, what is it called? Mm, something in the boudoir. Philosophy uh, dans le boudoir. And uh, I made a very, very personal, a non explanative work around that. It's very interesting. Video and painting. Video with. And drawings, yes. With a sort of video within a, a sort of vignette with a drawing onto the body. Yes, and at the first time I started to use new technologies, that is yes. to say, uh, computer generated images on the video images. But I mean, the, to choose to, to be invited to make work about the Marquis de Sade, to make work about the Marquis de Sade, involves a very, um, I mean, it, people used to be a lot more sophisticated than they are now. I mean, now you couldn't even begin to do it. Mm, I mean, no, it's a you mistake. could, but they couldn't. So, so, the, so they don't this know idea of relating to the sort of, this image relating to a kind of female body and to sexuality in some way, struck me as a very, very interesting, interesting work. And in a I way... I think it's one of the contrasts also, yeah. contradictions also of feminism. I mean, you have to accept it. That's exactly. what uh, Simone de Beauvoir says that yeah. all the time. We were full of contradictions. Massive. Yeah, so... So no, that work was... be afraid of that. Um, and uh, um, there is another piece, I mean, you have often worked collaborating with other people. Yes, and, and you talk well, about I, other artists. I mean, I want to know, A, about your relationship to other artists, but much more to other artists you work with. And that's something that seems to kind of happen every now and then. So, for instance, uh, in uh, Les Métiers de la Mer, yes. uh, that was working with Nicole Croiset. Yes. And, and that was where the word tear, as in earth, and mare, upside yes, down. Yes, that's a, a middle... A Middle Ages belief of the Atlantic Sea side, uh, sea people. They said the world would, as the, the the upside down of the uh, earth is upside down of the sea, or the sea is upside down of the earth. Yeah. Um, and then, so this was eighty two, and I'm bringing you back now to sort of trying to characterize what was happening generally, politically, how optimistic was one at the time? How free did one feel? Oh, we were very optimistic. Yes. It was, uh, uh, Mitterrand's uh, presidency, and uh, we had a quite interesting minister of culture, Jacques Long, which we thought was interesting, but it wasn't really that much. But Mitterrand was a, was quite a genius, very Machiavellian. And what about your? What, what would you say? What kind of were you associated with any organisations politically? Yes, but I would not like to talk much about that because I, I was just more. That's my I was well. more. I was more uh, uh, applied with the Turkish organisations okay. under the Mitterrand yeah. reign, uh, presidency, let's say. Uh, yes, I was, but uh, because of that, I couldn't go back to Turkey for 13 years, yes. consecutively, yes. But 
Doesn't want to go into we that. We don't want to go into that, but I just, I'm touching on some kind of different feelings yes, politically that I Politically, we could do it very because of the, in a lot of, of the uh, socialists, yes. That's right, and the relationship between yeah. art and politics is very much, very, very much, different. Very, very, very different. Strong. Not I mean. as much as they talked about it, but it yeah. was all the same at open door. Exactly. I mean, and this is touching on now is a work you did, two works, one actually in the Renault factory mm. where, where the pile of monitors, so in a way the relationship between the monitors would be placed in the factory, the working factory. But that was not Can my, our that? idea, that was, uh, uh, that, that was a fantastic uh, uh, manifestation called Sculpture in the Factory. Oh, that's straightforward. Yes, <laughs> sculpture in the factory. It was the uh, factory workers' uh, union who yeah. decided to do this art manifestation with about eight or ten artists. There were two young English artists, Tony Craig and Woodrow. I don't know what happened to him. He's around. Ah, he did wonderful work. He, yes. he, he got two cars. He could work, uh, play with the two <laughs> real cars and make a sculpture. But the, um, the condition was that we would show our, one of our older works in the, in the uh, Museum of Le Havre, mm. uh, just before. We would do the work. We made a video installation. Uh, and show it in the factory Amazing. for two days with all the workers coming and visiting. It was the, I don't know, maybe the 20th year of the factory. It, it doesn't exist anymore, Saint Duvier. Saint Duvier, yeah. It doesn't exist anymore. We don't do cars anymore in Europe, do we? Exactly, I mean, there's no manufacturing industry, hardly. We don't so even do mustard in France, can you imagine? But we don't do mustard, I mean, this is <laughs> French I, cuisine. When I said, why? We have master, they said the seeds come from Ukraine. So. Yeah, I mean, the reason I'm mentioning this is such a different relationship to labor and the idea of labor and the relationship. Yeah. And yeah. that's so why it was very important to see that. And then so later, that, that 24 yeah. hours, two days, was fantastic. Nice. They all came in masses with the families. And then the work was shown in the Maison de la Culture du Havre. It's very near the Havre, and it was a, it was a perfect uh, example of a very interesting uh, socialist uh, government's culture opinion. But the point is, I thought it was the perfection itself. The critics and the magazines did not follow. They didn't really? like it. No, France is a bit. Uh, because it was... Fourteenth, uh, 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 Louis the Fourteenth, well, you know, very, very far away. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 we didn't, it, it, we didn't get, we didn't even get n newspaper... Because afterwards. the only people that would see it would be the workers, I suppose. No, afterwards they could they afterwards, see yeah, it somewhere else, yeah. but I mean, it's not, it's not that, it is just that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't sophisticated enough, I mean, the uh, Socialist Party's uh, art, uh, culture, uh, politics was interesting at the beginning, but the culture didn't follow. They like they, all buildings, they still want after Monet. Yeah. For some people, Monet is a dangerous activist, you know, in France. Mm. Yeah, I live there, I know how it goes. <laughs> And then, and then, I mean, I will bring us back to now soon, but I'm sorry, I'm really fascinated by this, this, that relationship between making work and being involved in politics in a more general sense, without the idea of making political work that's yeah. illustrating a struggle. And that's, so I just want to dif make that differentiation with your work, because your work is very much more within the situation as opposed to, sort of, in a way, liberally telling people what they should be doing politically. So there is always a, a sort of very strong feeling here. But then later on, there's a piece talking about Renault where there's a, demo, where there's a demolition in 2004, which just 
in a way, tells us oh, everything yes, yes. about the definition Lil, Lil of Sega, the Lil Sega. Yeah, the factory wasn't uh, working anymore since many years. Uh, but uh, it's on an island in, in Paris, on the Seine, yeah. a huge island, and this is empty factory. I was teaching, uh, uh, I was doing uh, workshops with the computers in the, the museum there, Landowski Museum in boulogne billancourt And they asked me to do an interactive, I did a lot of interactive uh, CD-ROMs, yes, uh, so I, I, I found some old workers that had worked in that factory. The factory was empty. Mm. I filmed the empty factory and I found the workers, I uh, interviewed them. But my interviews, I never interf interfere. I just ask one question and they answer as they want. They talk as much as they want and that's all. I don't cut in. Which is not what I'm I doing. don't interpret. <laughs> so uh, that was shown there, yes. Uh, but uh, now. Well, I mean, I just was jumping around in that way because there's such a massive range in terms of media mm -hmm. yeah. and to do the relationship to place and change. And so that, I mean, I just thought that was a bit Renault, Renault. I thought that was quite nice to get them book ending some kind mm -hmm. of time. Um, so that was sort of about very much the end of mechanization of industry and the fact that, the, and which represents this relationship now to, to people coming without any work, have been, there is no work, and being treated so appallingly. Um, and so I just want to sort of um, just say, je suis, I'm very bad at this, but it's 1992. I'm exactly. I'm the female janitor, I think. Janissary. Janissary. A Greek Orthodox. I come from Turkey. I come from Turkey. I'm from Greece. I'm from France. I'm from France. Asia, Mongol, Mongol, blah, blah, blah. I'm a Mongol. Yeah, exactly. I am also. I have I have ancestors coming from Genghis Khan. Yes, it is true. So it, I just thought this was very good to read out. It's pretty straightforward. And There's it's also a video, yeah. It accompanies a video of, I think, of women on a demonstration and women working at a machine. Yeah. Now, at this moment, this, this manifesto is being shown, will be shown next month, in July, in the, in the biennial of uh, Pristina in uh, oh, yes. Kosovo. What's its name? I don't know. Yeah, Christina, yes. It's a Bayern Europe again. It has been shown in many places, yes, because it's very, you just send, it's a one just minute send video. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like that kind of work. Like this? Like this. Uh, and I send the video, and I send the text, and then put it on the wall. And the size of the wall. Simple. Yeah. You're not hanging around. Why complicate? Oh, down a bit. <laughs> I'm going to tomorrow that if time it leaves me alone, I will do that kind of work. <laughs> because why? It is so difficult to fill up things for uh, insurances. And, oh goodness me! When I, when my I did a tenth of nomads at 73, a huge, huge thing, big thing. Installation. I mean, it, it was an environmental art. We called the, that in the environmental art oh, at yeah. that time. No installation. No. And that thing came from Istanbul to uh, Rio de Janeiro in a box, wooden box, half of this piece. Yeah. A huge thing. And I saw that. I said, I'm not going to do that kind of thing anymore. <laughs> but it was shocking. I mean, it's. I mean, when, when we spoke. Um, on the Zoom, we were talking, and you said you hated really extravagant art of any sort. This a very expensive art, also. Expensive. You know, the poor uh, Adriano Pedrosa, who will be the next uh, uh, Venice Biennial uh, chief curator. Curator, yeah. He said to me, "We found. I mean, we had a lot of funds." Three fourths of the funds went to the exportation expenses, importation, yes, traveling expenses for the works, not of the artists. 
the works. So I find that very exciting. Yes. I think before we open up to uh, this fantastic audience or participatory people, I shouldn't call you that, it's impressive. But I'd like to talk about harem. 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 Oh, the harem. It's yeah, on please. the case model at this moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they both that, yes, they that the exhibition. Sort of, it's, it's, it's a daily life of two women into the spaces of the of the Ottoman home. So it's very much more well, about Sultan's harem, yes. And, yeah. And being and of course his relationship to Turkey and to a sort of interior and women well, it's being, it's trapped, being trapped being uh, trapped. Yeah, it's imprisonment of women exactly. in an architecture, in an empire system. And it is also it's not. It's nothing exotic of the harem. Because I do the performances myself as a house in the video, but it's. Uh, I think it's a very feminist work. Yes. I can't explain it. You have to go and see. Well, it. don't explain it. No, I'm just mentioning it. it. I don't yeah. hate things being explained over over explained. Yeah. Boring. Yeah. Anyway, now um, please, I'd like to open up. Oh my God! They're always so keen. <laughs> Uh, would you like to have which one of these? Would you like? Oh, let me. Let me. Very simple question. Yes. I can pass. Thank you. I have no microphones anymore. Don't worry. Um, can you just tell us a bit more? About, Say it aloud. Can you just tell loud. us a bit more about the image that you've used in this yeah. work? Well, this was um, uh, for the Paris Biennial. Uh, I did a work called uh, Turkish Immigrants. Uh, in Paris and around Paris. So these families live either in Paris or in the outskirts of Paris. They were immigrant workers, economic immigrant workers, and, uh, and their children. So you don't go to the people, people's houses and say, I come to film you. I can I come to photograph you. That doesn't work. We work with associations. We work with the cities, when they're outskirts of the city, with the mayors, and they prepare the terrain. And then we go. The who, people who want us, who accepts us, we go into their houses several times. We stay with them, and I put the video on. It, they are all. This is all. The first video machine, Portatac, Sony, 1973-74, very old. And uh, then I talk with them, I just ask questions and they, then it goes on and on and on, I take photos. Then I have a whole period of doing these drawings. Uh, they have no faces because all the same they have lost some of their identity. And so, no faces. And then later on, years after when I start, started doing this kind of work, I mixed the photos with the drawings I made by our computers. The faces start to appear. <coughs> it was about time. Uh, so it's a, it's a long process. It started in 74. Mm. And, uh, and then, in, in, in 2012 only, I had the idea of these portraits <coughs> for these images. Because I thought it was a pity because there were so few museums. Uh, why? Why have it in only for what museums? They show it once every 10 years. And so I said, let's. <coughs> Throw it out in the streets everywhere. Your question, please, or observation, or whatever. Thank you so much. Um, I know that you said that the phrase exile is a hard job comes from a Turkish poet, but I noticed in some of the different languages, the words for job and work are sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're It's different. very difficult to translate. I'm very, I'm very attentive about that. So uh, uh, the, the poet is a very famous poet, Nazım Hikmet. Uh, he has been translated to 20 languages. As much as I can, I find the books and I take the translations that were, that with, whom, with which he agreed. Ah, oh, thank you. So, but it's very difficult, like in Arab. 
exile is a different expression. Mm. So we try to do our best, but the 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 uh, the, uh, the game is it's not a game, but the the the, 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 trick, the thing is always the same images and always the same sentence in all the languages, either where the immigration population is, from which country, what language, or the country, what, which language, what country. So that is that never changes. Always the same text with red paint. That never changes, yes. But you, you, you can be, um, you can not, maybe not, so all the time agree with the translation because it changes, but I did my best, that's to say, take anyway, the books that were printed. As they say, it's a thought that has, at the end of the <coughs> event, you can write, there's yes. a paint here, you can write in your own language the yes. same sentence. Please do that, yes. God, how scary. <laughs> how scary. <laughs> <laughs> so, any more observation, please, questions then. Hello, and thank you so much for a great uh, event. I, I'm very impressed by uh, your explanation and about what I've seen here. I just want to know that why in this some of the pictures people are vanishing and they are disappearing in time, I don't know, in places. I just want to know your, your own idea about that. Yeah, with the drawings, yes. No, no, I, I removed them uh, on purpose because uh, like uh, this lady, she says we live four people in 10 meter square space. How can it be between husband and wife? How can we have privacy? I mean, they start losing their identity. I, I met people, those people, they were starting to, use, to lose their identity. Like there was one woman I met who had become completely crazy because she was closed down in that uh, huge buildings, you know, what they, make, they used to make in the uh, seven, seven, at the end of the 70s, yeah. outskirts of Paris. Oh my God. They go mad, they go mad. So, because they, it's all she has, all her world is a wall with wallpaper. Yeah. Yeah. But also a lot of... So the disappearance yeah. is... Uh, is loss of identity, small by small, step by step. But then at the third state, as they start to come back, because this population of the <coughs> 70s uh, in migration from Istanbul, economic migration, they don't, they, they're no longer immigrant workers. Either they became French, or they became, they, they have shops, they have Mm -hmm. Or they went back to Turkey. So that immigration is no longer there. Now we have another problem of climate, of war. Yeah. We have another type. Like Turkey has no immigration uh, from his own population. Not from its own population. Yes. <laughs> Um, I mean, just to know, I mean, it's hard like, to like, 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 because I have also the Portuguese in yes. the 70s. The Portuguese were not, Portugal was not in Europe, and there were many, many Portuguese immigrants living exactly in the same conditions yeah. as the Turks. But now it's completely changed. So, I mean, the problems are the same, but the populations, are, the groups change. And also this, that it's to take away the faces sometimes is about different about touch or being close i mean not close in necessarily a good way being cramped and also if you think something sorry bringing in a bloke old bloke but gorky's memories of his of of Socha and of his family there is no representation of the mother or the child there's no face so there's some sort of sense where you don't it isn't just about what you see sorry that's over arting it um any more please some here but anyway, uh, the uh, host, hosting country's attitude does not change. Yeah. That's for sure. It gets worse and worse. We all agree on that, I suppose. Yeah. 
I just wondered if your relationship, your encounter with the subjects of these photographs was fleeting only, or if you maintained a connection, or have any notion of what happened to the people that you photographed? Where are they now? No, uh, but, oh, I had a lot of con connections with them for years. I still do, like I will tell you something. This family, the three little girls and the four little girls, uh, they had a father and a mother. The father was a very progressive uh, factory worker who had, had a, a work accident, no hands, and uh, the, hands was, the hand was cut off work accident in a car factory. And uh, the wife was coming from a village, had a scarf, but not a veil. And the husband died. The girls, the husband says in one of the videos, I want my daughters to, to go to school, have a profession, to make studies and this and that. And the, the, women, the, wife, the, the mother would say nothing. When the guy, when the man died, I mean, these girls are 60 years old now. Now they're veiled in Paris. Can you imagine? Because it was the period, uh, the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, the Turkish community started to become Islamist, unfortunately. And she was, she went into it. You know, it's, uh, it happened everywhere. And she veiled her daughters. As so she would come to me and to a person with whom I worked in an association, saying that because they had gone to school, she was an accountant. She would, say, she would ask us, well, I want to have a job. Well, how can I have a job? I, I, when I go for a job, they don't take me. So we told her to take off her, the veil because nobody in France will take you in a, in a regular job as an accountant with your veil, unless you go and work in the firm I mean, uh, that was the situation, so I followed some of them. I had to follow because they came and asked us, what can we do? I said, you take off your veil. There is no other way. Because that's the, that's the, I don't know how it is in England, I think you can do anything you want, but uh, you're more, more liberal, maybe. But in France we have a law, you can't go and work yeah. in an official uh, with place the, with they. That, on that note, which is, I mean, I, that we could go on for absolutely ever. So, 60 but, and something, those little girls. But it's the most, uh, one, thank you, it's utterly brilliant, and I'm very glad we're surrounded you by You were brilliant, I do. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 I love them. Oh, okay. So, um, thank, you. Thank, thank you very much, it was amazing. Thank you all for being here, and um, thank you to the gallery for putting on this amazing event. <laughs> and. Okay, it's sunny outside, <laughs> and there's beer at the back. I saw it. So okay, <laughs> and the paints. Okay. Oh, they paint. Oh, paints. Go ahead. Go, go, go. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs>